Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is my series where I started reading the tales from the calamity and the rest of the stories hopefully after this one. Uh, this is going to be the fifth one so tales from the calamity in Lewis Wa's wake. You can find the previous ones uh, here on the channel and if you're watching this in the distant future hopefully the ones that follow as well and I really hope that I won't take ages <laughs> with uh, with uploading these, uh, these read-alongs and later on I will comment on it a little bit as well. Uh, if you happen to be new on the channel, this is where I upload my Final Fantasy XIV stuff, in-game highlights, live streams, uh, guides and such. So if you're interested in that, make sure to sub to the channel. And uh, yeah, let's, let's just start. Tales from the Calamity in Louis Wa's Wake. The ship glided out of the harbor, slowly gathering speed as its sails caught the brisk coastal breeze. Standing atop the cave wall with their father, Afano and Alize bore witness to the vessel's departure, watched as Louis Oua Levilleur, their beloved grandsire, was carried away across the sea. And then he was gone. Afano's voice was barely a whisper, his gaze fixed upon the dwindling form of the ship. Alize glanced at her brother with red-rimmed eyes but said nothing. The twins had greeted the news of their grandfather's forthcoming journey very differently. While one accepted his decision with a calm practicality, the other had railed and wept. Still, to see the two of them there upon the quay, their slight arms hugging hefty grimoires as if their young lives depended on it, one would struggle to tell them apart. They were not so different as they cared to believe. Even had you not gained admission to the studio, it made me exceedingly proud in so doing. These gifts would have been yours regardless. Here, one for each of you. When read together, these two grimoires form a single tome. Provided you support another studies, I have no doubt that you will soon come to understand the lessons inscribed therein. The volumes Louis Wa gave to his grandchildren, scant hours before his departures, uh, departure were curious indeed. Crafted such that the contents of one could not be deciphered without the other, they hinted at the impish humor which danced behind the oft-times solemn visage of Charlene's preeminent sage and scholar. Thank you, grandfather. Alfano accepted his grimoire with a practiced grace and dignity. Alizé, meanwhile, received her gift distractedly and swiftly resumed her attempts to dissuade Louis Wa from his course. Must you leave, grandfather? Is there not I can say to make you stay? Please, my dear, we have spoken about this. It had been almost a month since the twins first learned that Archon Louis Wa would be leaving Charlan for the shores of Eorzea. His purpose, he had patiently explained, was to aid the distant realm in forestalling the ruinous arrival of the Seventh Umbral Era. Sensing the fixity of his grandsire's resolve, Alfano had chosen to swallow his melancholy and voice no word of complaint. Not so his sister, nor less his father. Fortunal. Alizé protected the journey, uh, protested the journey purely out of her abiding love for Louis Wa, and the unbearable thought of his absence. Fortunal's strident objections were of a more political nature. Louis Wa's eldest son was an influential member of the forum the body responsible for shaping Charlan policy, and he, like so many of his colleagues, was a staunch opponent of military intervention. It was, he believed, the duty of his countrymen to chronicle world affairs, not to interfere in them. When the steel-clad wolves of the Garlean Empire descended upon Alamigo, it was Fortunal and his fellows who had attempted to parley a peace. In the bitter wake of the failed negotiations, however, they saw no recourse but to forsake the colony they had built war-threatened the borders of the war threatened, war threatened realm. Following five years of elaborate and painstaking preparation, the plan to evacuate the settlement's entire population to the northern archipelago of their homeland was put into motion. In the year 1562 of the Sixth Astral Era, the city of Charlian, a renowned center of learning, situa situated in the Dravanian lowlands, became an uninhabited shell in the space of a single night. The twins knew that they themselves had taken part in this exodus, but could claim no recollection of the momentous event, being less than one summer old at the time. War is the favored resort of the uncivilized and the ignorant father. 
began Fortunal, seeking to launch his own sortie upon the heels of his daughter's plea. The wise abjure it. As Charlians, it is our task to observe, to chart the course of history, not to change it. Civilization shall not be advanced through petty conflict, but by the passing of recorded knowledge from generation to generation. My mind will not be changed, Fortunal, Louis Soua responded warily. They had had this conversation almost word for word, perhaps a dozen times in as many days. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. And such a passive stance will not, I fear, take us far upon the path to progress. That you would spare these younglings the horrors of war is a decision with which I am in full agreement. Thus do I repay refrain from ex exhorting you or any other to return to yours yet at my side. We must all protect that which we hold most dear in the matter of our own choosing. And so the discussion ended as it always did, with neither willing to deviate from the script of their oft-rehearsed play. Alphano and Alize, it must be said, were children of exceptional intelligence. So advanced they were in their studies of etheric theory and other such esoteric subjects that both had gained acceptance to the studium at the tender age of eleven. Thus, it was the sharp-minded Alphano, while able to recognize the logic of his father's arguments, could also see that his grandfather's cause was just. That the boy remained silent then stemmed, not from simple stoicism, but from a keen sense of his own inadequacy, a realization that his unpolished skills would yet prove more a hindrance than help to Lusua's endeavor. Though no less bright, Alice eschewed her brother's affected maturity and gave vent to her discontent, inwardly cursing Alphano all the while for his mute acceptance of their grandfather's decision. How can he stand there and say nothing? A small yet conspicuous crack had appeared between the siblings. It was long after Louis Wa had taken ship and vanished over the horizon that the fateful day came. Alphino and Alize were crowded into the studium's observatory, along with their professors and a throng of fellow students. The assembled sages and would-be scholars huddled around the base of the giant telescope, each taking their turn to gaze upon the looming spectacle of the red moon Dalamud. Dalamud has shattered! Alize cried out, pressing her face closer to the telescope's eyepiece so that it dug into her cheek. The view provided by the device's array of magnifying lenses was distorted and indistinct, but the fate of the satellite was unmistakable. She could see its crimson fringe silhouette breaking apart in the skies over Cartano. Shattered? What, before it struck the ground? How is that possible? Excited murmurs and hastily formed theories erupted from the from teacher and pupil alike. He's done it! Grandfather has saved Eorzea! Alizé turned to find her brother's face, her eyes glistening with tears of joy and relief. For some time now, Archon Urianger has been kind enough to relay to them brief reports of Louis efforts in those chaos-stricken faraway lands. It was he who informed them of their grandfather's presence at the Cartano Flats and of the battle that still raged like as not beneath that blood-red sky. Shouldering aside his madly grinning sibling, Afano squinted through the ocular lens. Though the air was thick with billowing clouds of smoke and ash, he was forced to agree with Alize's assessment. Dalamud was no more. But something is awry. Afano continued to scrutinize the distant scene. The red moon's bloody glow had been replaced by an equally unsettling incandescent rain as if the heavens themselves were weeping tears of light, terribly, terribly awry. Dalamud's spectacular demise gave rise to a tidal wave of etheric energy which rendered lake shells all about useless for a period of many days. During this time, the Levior siblings were left to stew upon the wonders they had viewed from afar. Then, after weeks without word, a letter from Orianger arrived. The Archon's elegant script described horrors the twins could scarce bear to picture. From the cracked husk of the red moon had emerged a dragon primal immense beyond imagining, an incarnation of wrath and raging flame that had laid waste the land for moms in every direction. Undeterred, Louis Hua had persisted with his plan to call forth the power of the Twelve, and thus, it seemed, was the abomination banished. Eorzea had been saved. 
When the siblings reached the conclusion of Beranger's staggering account, however, the pale flame of hope which both had been nursing was finally extinguished. On the broken fields of Cartano did my dearest mentor, thy beloved grandsire, become as light and embark upon his final journey. Afino's shoulders trembled with quiet sorrow, while Alice wailed around carrying naught who heard her grief. Five years later, a ship once more glided slowly out of the harbor. Alfino and Alice stood on the gently rolling deck, watching the gradually shrinking figure of their father alone upon the quay. Recent graduates from the, of the studio, the twins were now 16 summers old, old enough to be considered of age in Charlian society. And so, although he opposed his children's planned journey, Orshino had not sought to bar their way. And now it is our turn, murmured Athena, thinking back to the day of their grandsire's departure. We follow in grandfather's wake, replied Alizé, her head bowed. Looking over at her, Athena was struck by how widely their convictions differed. As they gripped the rail, however, identical grimoires now hanging from their belts, one could hardly tell them apart. No. They were not so different as they cared to believe. Wow. Like, what a story for, for the last story in, in these series. And to be quite honest, I'm actually quite glad that I'm reading it right now. But a few years later, because now I can actually picture Charlene as, as at this time I've played through and Walker. And I think I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have understood uh, what, the whole deal with Fortunod was and his hesitance to uh, to assist, you know, the, the the conflict and the whole thing. Well, not just the conflict, but, you know, just, you know, the whole situation in Anna Walker. I'm trying not to, like, actually give spoilers. <laughs> but, um, but I now understand where he's coming from and why he's hesitant, because they gave such a such a good backstory on this. And it's it's just it just feels so good that after hours and hours and hours of you know playing and and being with the twins and getting to know them that we actually know what it is that that shaped them and and who it was that was on their side, it's just it's, it's such a such a very good story such a very good series and honestly if if these stories are so good, and they speak of the realm reborn I cannot wait to to read the rest of them probably next time starting from from heaven's ward going all the way to end walker i will be uploading them here on the channel so again if you're interested in that make sure to subscribe and i will i will see you next time i hope you enjoyed this i i definitely did and it was, it was very emotional very you know <laughs> nerve-wracking <laughs> yet again even though i wasn't uh, i wasn't the part of the original you know crowd of of the realm reborn players it's a it's a very emotional read and i hope you enjoyed them uh, these stories as much as i did uh anyways i'll be seeing you in the next series i'll probably make a separate playlist for for those so you can find it here on the channel and yeah i'll see you next time take care have fun and bye bye